appreciate it. All right, so I have a lot to cover today because um, there are some new things that are coming to Power Virtual Agents as well, which I also wanted to mention today. But before I dive in, I just want to introduce myself to you guys real quick. Uh, so my name is Dion Taylor. I usually tell people, just think about Celine Dion, her last name. That's the easiest way to remember, right, pronunciation-wise. Um, I'm actually a pre-sales director here at RSM, and I'm also a LinkedIn learning author. I have been working with Dynamics V65 since version uh, 4.0 or, or Dynamics CRM as it was called in a day. Uh, I'm an MVP as well. Still, hopefully I'm going to get renewed uh, in a week. We, we will all find out on July 1st. But definitely take a look at my blog at d365goddess.com or you can also follow me on Twitter. You can also use your LinkedIn app to like take a screenshot uh, and to kind of right connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, I'm trying to write articles and do videos on content, and I really like to focus on new things that are coming out. So you can see below my YouTube channel as well. And again, anybody who would like to connect on LinkedIn, I would love to. So feel free to, uh, to do that. But what I'm going to talk about today, I'm going to talk about all of the Power Virtual Agent components. So really after this session, you should be able to just go ahead and sign up for a trial and start building out uh, your Power Virtual Agents, right? Which is kind of exciting. So some of the components that I'll be discussing are the topics, which is really that whole conversation path that you can build out for your bot. Then we're going to talk about trigger phrases, what they are, how they work. Uh, the authoring canvas is where we're going to, quote unquote, build all of this stuff out, right? Those conversations. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about entities, what they are. Um, obviously, I'm pre-sales, so this is what I do for a living, demos, demos, and more demos. So, <clears throat> excuse me. And then lastly, I also wanted to talk a little bit about what's coming in Power Virtual Agent. I actually uh, got access through Microsoft through one of their uh, new environments that has all been leveled up. So I want to show you guys some of that as well. So... Um, but let's talk a little bit about what is a Power Virtual Agent, right? Just for people who don't know yet. Well, it's actually Microsoft's answer to chatbots. So this is Microsoft version of a chatbot. And the nice thing with this is if you're familiar with the Power Platform and some of the other uh, tools that Microsoft has out there, those business applications like Dynamics 365, et cetera, then you know that this platform is really low code, no code, right? So the big difference here is that when you're building a Power Virtual Agent or a chatbot, then you can actually use this, this very simplified I think we have lost Dion sound. Could anybody confirm if you can still hear Dion? Hello, you guys oh, still there? We can hear you I'm again, now, Dion. Thank you. I had a short, it seemed like my internet just wiggled off a little bit. So, all right, You're can you guys again, see my Dion. screen? Fantastic. Thank you, Dion. You're back. Excellent. Okay, great. Sorry about that. So I was just mentioning that Power Virtual Agents is really Microsoft's version of a chatbot, right? And if you guys are familiar with the Power Platform and some of the other business apps like Dynamics 365, et cetera, then you know that Microsoft is really focusing on low code, no code. So that really means that now these, these SMEs or subject matter experts can actually create these power virtual agents without having to get IT involved and get developers involved. Now, if we wanted to do something more extravagant where we needed developers to help us, obviously we could do that as well. So it really brings kind of both worlds together for those folks. Now, it's really designed with three of the key personas that we that Microsoft had in mind. Obviously, first of all, your customers, right? Those are the people that are going to be interacting with your chatbot. And these could be 
uh, external customers, people that will purchase from your organization, but they could also be employees, right? You could have a chat bot, for example, on Teams that would answer questions about HR, like, hey, what are the holidays for a company? And then the chat bot would list all of those answers. Then the second persona is really those subject matter experts, right? We are really enabling these people to build out these topics, these conversations with zero code. We're not going to need coding for that. But like I just said earlier as well, if we did need uh, some additional development to do some more fancy stuff, right, we could obviously do that as well. It kind of works together. And you kind of see that on this slide as well, right, that Power Virtual Agent is part of what I just mentioned, that Power Platform, which is built on, right, the data connectors, our Power Pages, we have Dataverse, we have Power FX, AI builder capabilities, right, is really a part of that Power Platform family, so to speak. So that means that we can take advantage of some of those things as well while we're working with Power Virtual Agents. Now, keep in mind that when you go and you spin up a trial here at powervirtualagents.microsoft.com, uh, you actually do need a work or school account. So if you are trying to use your personal email address for this, unfortunately, that doesn't work. But I would definitely make sure you bookmark this URL so after my session, you guys can go out and start playing around with this. So kind of wanted to walk you through that process real quick. So when you first sign in and you create a new bot, then a default environment is actually created. Now, if you need to, you can also use like previously created environments or add additional environments uh, by going to the Power Platform Admin Center. And then once you once you create your first bot, this is kind of what that looks like, right? So you need to enter a name for your bot, then you can select a language for your bot, and then, right, you can just select that pre-created environment, or you can point it to uh, a different environment as well. So pretty simple so far. And then once you do that, it's you're going to see this little robot thingy going, uh, doing some dancing on your screen here. And uh, after a couple of minutes, you'll you'll see this notification that says, "Okay, well, um, you can start exploring Power Virtual Agents um, while we're still kind of building your bot in the background." And this is a one-time thing, right? Once you spin up this environment, you have the ability to build multiple bots. So it's not like if you want to have multiple bots, oh, I need to spin up another environment. You can do that all uh, below this particular uh, environment. So now I already mentioned this kind of earlier, right, that we have several components and I wanted to kind of look at each of those individual components to kind of show you how they are used in the application. And you kind of see that when we log in, right? We have our home screen, we have our site map here on the left-hand side, just like with most of those business applications uh, that Microsoft has, right? So we have topics, entity, entities, there's a bunch of reports there as well. So you can kind of see how your bot is doing. Uh, there's some publishing tasks that we can do, right? Just like we do in some of the other business apps. First, you kind of want to test it, make sure it works correctly, and then you can publish that. So let's go ahead and talk about some of these things. So first, I wanted to talk about topics. What is a topic? Well, a topic is, is I don't know how else to kind of say this, but it's more, it's kind of like a conversational path that allows your customers to have a conversation with your bot that, that kind of feels natural, right? And that flows appropriately. So you can configure these topics using the authoring canvas. This is where you're gonna do this to ask questions to your customers. And then you can also configure responses, right? What if they answered this? What do I wanna do? So that's kind of how you're gonna use those topics. And then each of those topics will be triggered by something, right? Because think, think about this, if you have a gazillion topics, you can see here on this slide, I have 29, but the bot needs to know, okay, which one should I push them to, right? Which one should I refer them to? And that's where trigger phrases come into play. So if somebody says a particular phrase, 
that's how we can route them by lack of a better words um, to a particular topic that we have. Now, anytime when you start, when you just spin up a, a bot, what you'll see is that there's gonna be a, a list of these test topics in here as well. And you can kind of, uh, or lesson topics, I think they're called actually, and you can kind of look at those to kind of see what they do and how they're built. They're not really designed for production use, but more to kind of show uh, these people to kind of how that works and how some of these things are built. Now, another question that I get a lot is like, hey, can we import topics? Well, you can see here, it says suggest topics here on the top. And with that, you can actually leverage existing web content to import these new topics. Now, the content on the website needs to actually be in the form of a FAQ page, right? So you have a question and then you have an answer. Right, so that way it's going to be easier for the bot to import that. Now, you would still have to go into these topics to kind of like approve those imported topics, right? And then you can tweak it a little bit if that's needed. And then you can, as you can see here, you can turn that on and then publish that content to wherever you're showing that. Now, I kind of talked about this a little bit, right? But let's dive in a little bit deeper. So, trigger phrases are really those those keywords or, or questions or, or phrases, right, that your customer is likely to ask your bot. And it could be related to a specific issue normally, right? So again, the bot is, is using this to route your customer to a particular topic. And like I said earlier, a big part of these conversation is really around natural language understanding, which is the ability for artificial intelligence to understand intent, right? So for example, somebody might type in, hey, I tried to use my gift card, uh, but it didn't work. So the bot is going to still be able to route the user to the gift card topic, even if that exact phrase wasn't listed as a trigger phrase. Right. So it kind of learns and it uses right that artificial intelligence to kind of steer the, the client to the correct topics. And again, the more that people are interacting with your bot, the more that the application is going to learn for that. Now, this is that authoring canvas. And I know it looks kind of a lot when you look at this on your screen, but it's actually really, really easy. So this is where you're going to be spending most of your time, right? Because this is where you're going to configure the questions, the answers, and maybe certain actions that need to be done, right? So administrators can type in a question that the bot is going to ask your customer. Then we're going to configure response types, right? And we can even store those responses from your customers as well in variables. And then based on that, you can see that, right? I have here a question, which location are you interested in? And then I'm configuring what type of answer do I want here? Well, I wanna do a multiple choice so that when they interact with the bot, they can just click any of these buttons. And then based on that, I can say, if they, if they click on Bellevue, show this, if they click on Redmond, show this. So this is that topic, right? This is that conversation path that we're kind of guiding uh, these clients through. Now, when you are creating a message or when you're creating a question, you also have some formatting options. And that's kind of what you see over here, right? You can put links in there. You can use some of these formatting settings here, italic or, or bold. You can have these uh, bullet points, links, but you can also use, and that's kind of what you're seeing over here, you can refer back to answers that your customer has given before. So let me give you an example. Somebody says, uh, your bot asks, hey, what's your name? They say, my name is Sandy. And then the next message could be, hey, Sandy, right? Because we are saving that response that we got from the customer back. All right, enough chit chat. Let's go ahead and let's now go into a demo. <clears throat> and what I wanted to do first is, is kind of just let you experience uh, what that bot looks like for your customers. So 
there, there actually is, you can see that over here, there's actually a demo website that you can utilize to kind of test out this bot, right? So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go ahead and start my chat. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. So I don't know about you guys, but I am a huge Star Wars fan. So I just created a little bit of a content around that. So I'm going to say I love Star Wars and let's see what he says. So then my bot says, hello, my little Padawan. I hope all is well with you. How are you planning to use the force? Well, I want to go to the dark side, don't we all? And then he's asking me, okay, well, why do you want to join the dark side? So it's kind of repeating back to me what I'm doing here. Well, I want to rule the universe, right? Don't we all? And then he says, it sounds a little selfish to me. Maybe you should reconsider. Why do you want to join the dark side? What I'm doing here, and I'll show you this in a bit, is I'm doing a loop, right? If I click this again, it's going to say the same thing again. And it's, it's creating a loop where I'm just going back to the same question. So you can do things like that as well. Let's just say that we want to kick Kylo Ren's behind here. And, oh, the bot never liked him either, just like me. So let's now go ahead and pick a weapon. Let me see here. Do we want the Sith sword? Sith sword is kind of cool, right? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the Sith sword. And then he says, oh, great choice. I love the Sith sword. So now he's repeating back to me my choice of weapon, right? And then he say, okay, who do you want to be your partner in crime. Well, I think Darth Vader died, right? So let's just go with Darth Mal. And okay, now it's kind of giving me that overview of everything that I picked. I want to join the dark side to kick Kylo Ren's behind. And I'm going to partner up with Darth Mal. And my weapon is a Sith sword. And then it's going to, it's, it's asking me, do you want me to email this to you? So now it's actually going to perform an action. All right, so I can say, yes, I want that to happen. And I can say, just send it to my work email address. All right, my email has been sent, right? So this is a good example of a conversation path uh, that I just had with this particular bot. Now, when we look at Power Virtual Agents itself, I'm actually gonna go to that topic here. Right, so here's my Star Wars topic. And <clears throat> the nice thing here is you can also test this directly in line, right? This is my test bot. And again, if I say, I love Star Wars, you can kind of follow along what it's doing. So first it showed me the message, then it asks me the question. Let's now go to the light side. See, it's now, Basically, uh, it says that, oh, I picked the light side. So now it's asking me this question. So what do I want to do? I want to meet Yoda because he seems like a really cool guy. And then look what I'm doing over here. I'm actually now getting an image of Yoda, which he's showing me. And again, I'm going through some of those questions. But what I wanted to show you here real quick is, let me actually say, I want a uh, polka dot lightsaber. And let's see what he says to that. <clears throat> Pick your partner. I'm always going to go with Han Solo. But what I wanted to show you here is that while I'm going through these questions, right, it's kind of keeping track of some of these answers that I gave, right? So let me go back up here. I'm actually going to uh, move this out of the way here, hide the bot. So I first started with what is the side that I want to, right? My question was, how are you planning to use the force? And then I said, give, the, give them two options, dark side and light side. And the response to that question is being saved as a variable. Now the system will automatically uh, enter a name for those variables like var1 and var2 and all that kind of stuff. But that's kind of hard for us to remember, right? So what I'm doing here by clicking on this, I'm actually giving it a name. So now the system is saying for this particular question, that variable force usage, right? For this question, the customer entered, entered light side, right? So that's kind of how we can keep track of those answers. And then we can even respond back to them as well. So I'll cover some of that 
uh, later on as well. Now, in regards to <clears throat> what I said earlier, let me go back here to home. <clears throat> or I need to go to topics, sorry. You can also have the system suggest topics, right? So for example, and I have this, I think on my link here, let me just pull up my PowerPoints here so I can pull up that link so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Let me go back here to Power Virtual Agent. So this is a website that kind of shows you that FAQ side, right? I have a question and then I have an answer and I have a question and I have an answer. So if your website is kind of, you know, organized like this, I can go here to suggested topics and I can say add that and then start. <clears throat> and what it's going to do, and we're going to get back to this, but it's going to import uh, so, oops, import some of those things that you just saw on the website. And once they are done, it's going to show up here on the suggested. And then I can go back in and approve them. And I can also make some changes to that. All right. So let's move on here. Because like I said, I still have a lot of stuff to cover for you guys. <clears throat> now, the bot doesn't have to follow that, that conversation path blindly, right? Because you can actually have it use all of the information that it has access to, to decide to ask a question again, or, or not again, but when to skip it, right? So for example, if your customer al already provided some of the information earlier on, then the bot will remember that and will actually skip that particular question. So it's not going to constantly, you know, ask for the same question if that information was already provided, which I think is very important. Now, the other thing that you need to keep in mind is that for, for any bot to be actionable, right, it has to be smart. It has to understand what people are saying, right? So Power Virtual Agent comes with a set of pre-built entities, and those are um, think of those as the most commonly used stereotype of information in real world dialogues. So think about uh, age or, or a number or a color or an email address, right? What this does is we can actually tell the bot, this is the type of information that we're looking for. And that helps the bot recognize the relevant information, right? From that input standpoint, and again, we know that we can already save that for future use. So again, think of entities in this particular for those system entities as a way to tell your bot what to look for in that unstructured structured text, right? So for example, if somebody, if the bot asks a question and they say like, what is your spending limit? And they're entering, my spending limit is $5,000. If for that question you actually tag the money entity, then the bot knows that that $5,000 is money. It's a money type of information. So when the bot actually stores that response, it will only save 5,000 as a number, even though the entire message said, you know, I have $5,000 to spend. So that's kind of how you can use uh, some of this. And then on top of that, we also have synonyms, right? So if you have a particular word um, that you can kind of see that in here, right? If you have a word that this is called brown spots, so I can also say bear spots or brown spots patches. These are synonyms and these come into place when we're creating our own custom entities. These are a little bit different from the system entities, right? Because now we're kind of grouping some of these items together, right? So I'm going to say, hey, I'm looking for lawn concerns and I'm grouping the responses together. Like, so somebody could say brown spots, lawn pests, fertilization, mosquitoes. And as you can see here, I can even enter some synonyms for those words as well. Again, this is really going to be for the bot to more easily understand the data that your customer is, uh, is entering. 
Now, the smart match option is also part of that intelligence that is supported by that language understanding model, right? So that provides the flexibility to let the bot take in the user input in, in a fuzzy way based on the list items given to the entity. So you're going to say, okay, what, what does that mean, a fuzzy way? Well, you know, somebody could misspell a word, right? Or somebody could also say, hey, I'm looking for a career instead of I'm looking for a job. And if you have, for example, you this is this could be like, you know, looking for a job or whatever, or an HR uh, type of uh, entity, right? So instead, if somebody then types in career versus job, it will understand that because again, that's kind of what, how we can use uh, that AI that runs in the background with that. And this is kind of what I was talking about earlier, right? I uh, I was already, <laughs> I already kind of talked about this, the synonyms that we can kind of enter so we can help that understanding of those items that are being entered into the system at all uh, as well. All right, so again, let's go ahead and uh, see uh, a demo of what I was talking about. So you can see here, here are the entities and you can also see all of the pre-built entities, right? Here we can see an email address. So if you are asking a question to say, hey, what is your email address? Then you wanna capture that particular uh, response as an email um, entity. So I'm gonna show you that I actually have Oops, let me close this. I still have my Star Wars open. And if you guys remembered at the bottom here, this was on the dark side. Let me again hide my bot. It was actually asking about an email. Let me see here. Do you want me to send an email? Please enter an, an, a valid email address. So when I entered this question, and let me actually do that from here. I'm going to say, I'm going to do a question. And I'm going to say, what is your, oops your email address, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is I'm going to identify the type of data that we're looking for, right? So I'm going to say this is an email, right? My email pre-built, right? We saw that over here, my pre-built entity. So I'm going to say I'm looking for an email address. So it doesn't matter. So that's all I have to do. And then you can see here, right? This is that bar, which I just went in here and I said, let me rename that to email address. I'm doing multiple S's because I already have this one and then it's gonna yell at me. So that's kind of how we can do that. So I'm gonna get rid of this, but let's just go ahead and again, kind of walk through this very quickly. Star Wars. So I can kind of show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna say dark side, Kylo Ren. Uh, lightsaber, uh, Darth Maligan, right? We really like him. Do you want me to email it to you? All right. So now we're going to see here the email address, right? That's this guy. So if I'm going to say my email address is blah, blah, blah at email.com, I'm going to go ahead and send that. And look at that. It only it extracts that email address. So that's really how that is used here inside of that application, right? And that's how we can use some of these things. Now, I also showed you, uh, or I didn't show you yet. I also have, I should say, uh, this Star Wars. This is my my list, my entity that I created here to kind of, you know, allow for the system to kind of understand what they're looking for, right? For the bot to understand. And again, if I go back here to my topic, do I have it open here now? Let me go back here to my topic, go away. Let's go again to Star Wars. What I did here is I'm going to refresh this here. So all this green, green stuff is turn off. What I'm doing here is I'm using now my Star Wars entity, just like I did the same way. I created a question, right? I clicked identify, but look at that. Instead of using, oops, all of those options in that list, I'm saying only show these two options, right? So you can do stuff like that as well, where you kind of filter the options that you want to show to your user. 
All right. All right, let's continue. Now, you probably also saw that <laughs> I had some actions on that as well, right? So out of the box, we can utilize Power Automate flows to perform actions on backend systems, right? So I'm going to demo that to you guys as well. What I'm going to do over here is um, I'm going to actually have somebody interact with my bot. And then based on the information that's entered, I'm going to use a Power Automate flow that has been triggered from my conversation in Power Virtual Agents, and that's going to create a record. So you can do stuff like that as well. But you could also query data from you know, your application. So I'll show you that as well. So if somebody's looking for an order, um, they can put in the order number and get details on the order. But maybe you want to make sure that people need to be authenticated first, right? Before they can start asking about orders. So that's also something that you can do here as well. And I kind of mentioned this before, right? We can skip questions if the information has already been given by that person who is interacting with that bot. Um, but on top of that, we also have the ability to configure a handoff to Dynamics 365 Omnichannel for customer service. And what I mean by that is that when it's time, when a bot cannot answer the question, but you want a live agent to be involved in this, we can use Dynamics 365 Omnichannel for that handoff from the bot right to your live agent. And then there are some generic live chat providers as well uh, that you can configure this with. I have not tried that because I'm just solely focused on Dynamics 365 and Power Platform, but it is available. Now, I don't want to waste too much time on this. Yes, it comes with a bunch of analytics, right? Some nice charts up top and in the middle and on the bottom, but it really kind of allows you to review what's going on, right? How often are some of those uh, conversations abandoned? You can kind of say that over here. So maybe we need to go back in there and kind of uh, take a look at that and maybe update some of our topics. So that's kind of where you can take a look uh, at those analytics and where some of that stuff comes into play. All right, more demos. So let me see here. This is demo three. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to go back here to my instance and I'm going to show you, let me see, do I need to do that here? Sure. I'm going to show you now how we can utilize Power Virtual Agent to actually return data from Dynamics V65 uh, inside of that chat. And I'm going to go, I think I should be able to just do that from the demo website, but we will find out. So I'm going to say, uh, let me see here. I'm going to say, load my demo script. Hopefully it's not going to throw up at me. This is a demo. Do you want us to con contact you later? I'm going to say yes. Okay, what is your first name? And again, I could configure this first name question to be looking for a name so that when I type in my name is Anne, right, it will only take that type of information. Anne um, Smith, and then my email address is ann.smith at email.com. <clears throat> so, what it's doing right now is I actually have a Power Automate flow that will query my database to see if we have an Ann Smith at email.com in there, either as a lead or as a contact. If we do, it's going to associate a task, a follow-up task for whoever owns that contact or lead. If it doesn't, it's actually going to create a new lead in Dynamics V65. So let's see here, I'm gonna refresh this and hopefully this worked and here it is, right? So now I'm utilizing Power Virtual Agents to enter data inside of Dynamics 365. Now it's a little slow, unfortunately that's sometimes what happens with these uh, demo instances, but you can kind of see here, right? I have a first name that I captured, my email address, and obviously you can capture more information. I probably would also have a lead source set as the bot, right? So that I know where this is coming from, but those are also things that you can do here as well. Um, let me see here. Yeah, that's what we wanted to show. I'm gonna show you some additional things uh, a little bit further. So 
again, right, this can take you to many different places now that we know that we have access to Power Automate flows as well, because Power Automate flows has, I think, over 400 connectors now. So we can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Now, you saw that I used my uh, my Power Virtual Agents on that demo website that comes with the application, but you can always you can also publish these bots to other platforms or or channels, right? As Microsoft called calls them. So here you can kind of see what is available. You see um, mobile apps, Facebook, um, Teams, um, all sorts of different channels. Now keep in mind that once or every time that you publish new content, if it's the same bot on all of those different channels, um, this will be updated across those channels, right? And of course, anytime you make a change, you need to publish, but it will push it out through all of those different channels. So it's not like you have to go to each individual channel and do your updates, right? So we kind of talked about this, um, right? This is just for folks to try it out. So if you have people on your team that want to try this out, send them the link, um, see if they like it. Again, this is not for a production, guys. This is really just for testing, et cetera. Now, we just talked about those channels, uh, and I'm just showing you an example of uh, allowing you to uh, put your 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 Power Virtual Agent on a custom website. Now, if you have, by the way, this enabled or integrated with Omnichannel for customer service, you're going to use the chat embedded widget code, so to speak, that's in uh, Omnichannel for customer service. But you can use this, obviously, as well to just put this uh, Power Virtual Agent, uh, just a bot, right, on a custom website or something like that. And this is kind of where you can do that. So if you go here, uh, to a channel. Let me just close out of this. So I think it's on their publish. Yep. Uh, configure channel. So you go to channels. So if I'm going to say I'm going to put this on a custom website, this is what you saw in that screenshot. If I want to publish this on Microsoft Teams, so I have to click out of that, it's now asking me different things because now I need to actually uh, give an app ID. I already have this actually enabled, but let's go to Facebook. I need to have an app ID. You can see that Facebook app ID, Facebook app secret. Um, so you need some additional information here. Uh, but again, the custom website is just for you to embed that HTML code in there, right? So you can then start to kind of work with that. Now that we're going to the next slide, what I'm going to do here is because usually this takes a couple of seconds. So what I want to do here is I want to log into where is it omni channel so let me just go ahead and do that so that you guys don't have to wait for me omni channel for customer service okay while that's logging in let's take a look at some additional slides so for the people who haven't seen this yet this is that screenshot is omni channel that is an add-on to dynamics 365 for customer service and this is really nice, right? Because it, it's literally two clicks of a button to quote unquote integrate this. And this is gonna allow you to, right? Do that handoff to a live agent that I mentioned earlier um, as well. And the nice thing here is that when you do hand off that conversation from the bot to an agent, then they're gonna be able to see that full history of that conversation, right? Uh, as well as some of those user-defined variables as well. So by using this, we can then take advantage of the routing rules and all of that complicated routing that's part of Dynamics 365 customer service so that we're going to be able to route them to the correct queues and therefore the correct agents. So I always love demoing this. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So I'm going to go... And I'm going to go here to, this is Omnichannel for customer service that I'm logged into, as you can see. And I have embedded this here on my portal from the portal connector. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to start my chat here. I'm kind of going to run you guys through this. Now, what you see over here, this is these are pre-chat questions. 
right? This is part of once you integrate Power Virtual Agent with Omnichannel, you can now in Omnichannel, you can configure some of those questions that will pop up as soon as people open the bot. And you can also make some of these required, by the way. So I'm going to go ahead and enter an email address. This is actually an, uh, an email address from a contact that I have in Dynamics 365 as an FYI and do a couple of different things here. I'm going to go ahead and start here my communication. So this is going to be pushed to Power Virtual Agents at first. It seems to be a little slow today. OK, here we are. And these start messages, by the way, are also completely configurable. So this is going to say, what can I help you with today? I'm going to say, where is my order? And let's see if it picks that up. Hopefully I didn't turn that off, but I don't think I did. Okay, <clears throat> I will be happy to assist you with your order tracking. All right, so let's take a look. I hope I did not delete this order, but here's an order inside of Dynamics 365 that's related to Angel. And I'm using Power Automate Flow now to query for orders that have this number. And look at that. So now I'm actually feeding data from Dynamics V65 back into Power Virtual Agent, right? So the name of the order is New Order. It has a status of shipped, and the shipping method is FedEx. Do you want to check any other orders? So if I say yes, it just goes back here to please enter your order. This is what I talked about earlier, right? Being able to kind of do that loop. So I'm going to say no, but what do I want to do now? It's going to ask me, <coughs> do I want to talk to an agent or do I want to create a case? Well, you saw earlier that I had already created that lead, but I can do the same thing for any of these rows, right? I can create cases. I can do all sorts of stuff, but I'm not sure if you, you noticed, but I only entered my email address. I didn't tell the bot who I was or any of that. So let's take a look to see what happens when I'm trying to create a case for this guy. Please enter a description. So I'm going to call this um, test case for my session. There we go. I'm going to enter that, see if he's going to ask me something else. Let's see here, just give it a second, because what it's doing right now is it's actually kicking off the Power Automate flow in the back end where it is trying to find the record. It's going to see if that contact has an account associated with it. And if it does, it's going to create um, that case here in Dynamics 365 customer service. So here it is. Let's just copy that here. Oh. I don't want that dot here. And we should be able to see, I'm going to actually refresh this here. And here it is. There is the test case for my session. And again, some of those customer service uh, capabilities that we get here is now showing those notifications about that case being assigned as well. So I can open my case. You can see there's not a lot in here when, once this opens because I, I didn't really um, <clears throat> enter a lot of data except for the title, but I do see that this is coming through Power Virtual Agents. I could ask, right, what the category is and something, stuff like that, but you can see here, it noticed that I was the contact because that's the email address I started with, and then Angel is related to a datum, so that's the customer for this particular case. If it didn't have an account, then it would just make Angel the customer on this particular case. So you can do nice stuff like that very easily. All right, let's go back. Oops, let's go back here to the website. Is there anything else I can help you with? Yes. I can either say that I'm done or I can say, oh, I want to speak to an agent. And this is that handoff, right, that I was talking about. So what it's doing right now is it's moving now this particular person. As you can see, it's escalating this now to a live agents right so i can say i'm going to accept or i'm going to reject this and if i reject this it just goes <coughs> excuse me back into that queue and is going to try to sign it to a different person all right let's go ahead and i'm going to close this case here you know what let me just not do that because i don't want to close this out but what you'll see here is that I have access to the entire conversation that my bot, my virtual agent had with this customer. So I can review all of this. They were asking about an order 
And what you see over here is an internal message from Power Virtual Agents to the agents. So I could have put information in here to say like, hey, they just created a case and they were asking for this order number, right? So I can do things like that uh, as well. But that's kind of what that handoff looks like. And you probably noticed that that was pretty slick, right? There's really not a lot that I have to do um, over there. All right. And then you're probably going to answer, uh, ask like, okay, well, what happens if none of the phrases that the customer is entering are recognized? Well, what we can actually do is we can have a fallback topic. So if nothing matches, then, you know, it will direct them to that particular topic. And another important thing is that we now actually have the ability to export and import these bots across multiple environments by using solutions. So I love this feature. This I think it came out last year, but I thought that was, that was really, really great. So some of the things that I was very, very excited about is what Microsoft is coming up now for the next release of Power Virtual Agents. And they actually um, mentioned this during Microsoft Bill back in May. I also wrote an article about this, so again, Check out my website if you want to read more about this and if you want to see uh, some demos on that. But there are some really cool things that are coming. Um, so the, the authoring canvas, so I'm talking about the legacy canvas that I just mentioned, uh, has been replaced with a new one, which was built from scratch. And the new canvas brings together low code and pro code capabilities into one unified Canvas. Now, it, it doesn't mean that this new authoring canvas looks completely different because it doesn't. We're just going to have a lot more options that you can choose from uh, within that authoring canvas. So you can kind of see here, we on the top, we have uh, a couple of additional things here, right? I can cut uh, messages and questions and then copy them. So these are some of the things that have been changed, but this is not even the most important thing that I wanted to share with you guys. So um, there are a lot of updates to messages and questions. So we have something that's called message variations. Previously, we were only able to show one message. So if a customer goes back and back and back, it will see the same message all the time. Now, this is different because this is going to allow you in one of those message blocks to actually have different uh, wordings for the same message. And what the system will then do is randomly choose from any of those options, uh, right, to send that back to the customer. So for example, if you're a customer and you're chatting to the bot and you say, um, you, you want them to have like a, a, a hello message, right? You can enter a message vari variation of hello there, of or good day, or how's it hanging, like, right? Those are message variations and the bot will pick one of them. Um, and that's kind of what you see um, over here. Now, another great feature is the ability to add an image or a video to a message. And you're probably gonna say, well, didn't you, oops, didn't you just show me that? Yes, I did, but that was actually using Power Virtual, uh, Power Automate to pull in that message. So now you can actually, you don't need Power Automate for that. You can just use this image or video um, icon for that. And then you can just add them in there. Then we also have, oh, I'm not sure why I have these. Okay. Uh, we have the ability to show adaptive cards in there as well. I'm sure you all know what an adaptive card is. Um, a basic card is more like hard-coded information, right? An adaptive card, we can use dynamic content. So, for example, variables from the conversation that the bot was having with that particular customer. So that's kind of what that difference is. And then lastly, we can add quick replies. So normally, if you have a message, you cannot show options for people to click like we do uh, currently in questions, but we're going to be able to do that now by using those quick replies. So that's pretty cool as well. All right. And then, oops. Oh, let me go back here. And questions now actually have another feature, which are called properties. And from there, you can configure, first of all, whether or not the question can be skipped or needs to be asked each single time. We can do that as well. But 
what is really cool is that we can now actually configure the uh, customized message. So what I can do here is I can say, how often am I going to retry? If, I, if the bot doesn't understand what the customer typed in, how often are we going to retry this, this question? So I'm going to say here three times. And then look at that. I can send a customized message like, hey, you entered something. I didn't understand what that was. So could you please enter that again? So that's kind of, oops, that's kind of what that is, right? That um, customized message. But again, this is only for questions. What I mentioned up here is both for questions and messages. So there's a little bit of a difference there. All right. Now, this is a huge one, right? Because now we actually going to have a dedicated telephony channel, which is going to allow you to configure the bot to receive phone calls, which is, I thought this was great. So in order to set this up, you're going to need an Azure subscription and an existing Azure communication services phone number as well. Now, having said that, this looks like we don't even have to now separate bots for bot for chat and voice channels. And that's exactly what it is. And listen to this. You can even configure the voice and the speaking style of the bot, right? So all bots are configured to use like a default voice and speaking style by default, but you can also select other voices um, yourself as well. All right, let's take a look. We still have some time. So this is that new experience for Power Virtual Agents, which is not live yet, right? I just have this preview instance so I can kind of get my hands on this. So the first thing you notice is that we now have a home page, right? And if I click on chatbots, I can see where my chatbots are. Now, this has been sitting here for a while. That's probably why it's a little bit slow. So if I want to create a new bot, I can just click on here on, on Create. And then I can just access or, or, you know, start another bot. You can see here I have two. So the first thing that I want to show you here is my reservation topic here. So I'm just going to go ahead. You know what? I'm, I'll open the other one as well since it seems that this is taken a little bit. I'm going to leave this. Okay. So this is the first one that we want to go to. So this is that image, right? It immediately starts with the restaurants. Hey, do you want, if you like, I can help you make a reservation. This is that, what I said earlier, that quick reply. This is not a question. It's just a message, but I can click on it so that the bot immediately sends it to the correct topic. How many people will be in your party? Um, I'm going to say blue. That's not the answer it was looking for, right? So now it's saying, I didn't understand your answer. Please tell me the total number of people. I'm going to say four. Right. Okay. What is the desired time and date of your reservation? I'm going to say, what are we today? We, I'm going to say July 1st of this year. And now it says your reservation is in. Estimated wait time is 44 minutes. Your seating time is that and that. Now, this is very, very simple, right? Um, like I said earlier, we can do some other stuff uh, as well. For example, if we want to do a little bit um, more fancy stuff. I'm going to say flights and uh, maybe track my flights. I hope I didn't turn it off. Okay, so now it's saying I'm actually going to go back to the Netherlands soon. So I want to track my flights. Um, and there's two that I'm looking at. So I'm going to say let's take a look at number KL506 and look at that. This is an example of that adaptive card, right? It's telling me, oh, the status is delayed. Here's your departure time uh, from Miami to Amsterdam. Okay, let's, um, I, the flight seems to be delayed, right? So I can also look at another flight, like let's see what Delta has. Um, maybe I should just rebook my flight because Delta is on time, right? So we can do things like that as well. And on top of that, we're also going to be able to use power effects right inside here of Dynamics 365 or Dynamics 365 Power Virtual Agents. So for example, you can see here my Power Automate stuff that I have here. Um, but what I'm doing here is I'm using a variable value to be automatically set based on 
this power FX formula, and I can make this a little bit bigger, right? So this is where I'm saying, hey, the reservation date from that that people uh, entered, right? Add the current wait time, and that's actually going to be in minutes. So this is a whole new ball game now, right? We can we're going to be able to do so much more now because we have the ability to use Power FX. And if you go back here to my greeting, this is kind of what I was talking about, right? Message variations. One time it will start with hello there. The other time it will say good day. But what I can do here is I can add, right, an image like I did over here. And all you have to do is just put that URL on there and the same thing with the videos. But I can also create, as you can see here, an adaptive card, right? And then enter that as an image, as a message, I should say, um, that you just saw in here, right? That adaptive card. So I have four minutes left. Uh, I just wanted to see if there were any questions here. Let's take a look in the chat. If I can bring it up here. Thank you, um, Dion. Um, so there are no questions. I think everyone's been obviously uh, ingesting all the knowledge and information and imparting. Um, so there are no questions yet. Yeah, it was a lot. There's great oh, feedback. Thank you, Jacko. Appreciate it. Yep, we're all learning lots from you uh, today, uh, Dion. So thank you so much. Your great feedback, uh, Jacko, saying brilliant session. Uh, have to learn how to demo like that. So you're a great example to learn from. Uh, Devon, also the same. Oh, thanks, Devon. And Alina as well. Um, you covered a lot there, um, Dion, especially some of the scenarios we're going to be covering as well tomorrow in relation to the uh, uh, omni-channel integration in addition with the uh, virtual agents as well. So I know you've already touched upon it today, uh, but we will be going more deeper into that. But yes. Dion, um, could you do us a favour um, and share yeah. your contact details on the chat because uh, you're a highly valuable resource for the community and I'm Absolutely. sure all the attendees would love to keep in touch with you on LinkedIn, Twitter, as well as on your blog and on YouTube as well. Absolutely. And for anybody who is um, actually going to attend Summit, um, that's going to be in October, I believe in Orlando. I'm presenting three sessions there as well. And then Microsoft has their, what is it called? Microsoft Power Platform Conference in September. And I'll be doing a couple of sessions there as well. So if you guys are going, uh, let me know. I would love to meet up with you guys there as well. Um, and again, thank you so much for having me, Roz, and for everybody for uh, joining today. And I will copy and paste my details into the chat right now. Right. So there is one question. Uh, so we've got time for one question uh, from uh, Marcos, who's asking, if we use PVA with Power Automate RPA, can we receive a return from the RPA execution into the box? I have not used that yet because I am uh, actually covering nine products for my organization and RPA is not one of them. So that is a great question. Uh, definitely, uh, Marcos, if you want to um, connect with me on LinkedIn and then send me that message, I'm going to find out for you. Fantastic. So um, lots of great feedback, uh, Andreas. Um, yeah, lots of love from the community there. So remember, Dion will be in Florida for the Power Platform Conference, um, so you can actually meet her in person. Um, so follow Dion, that's her blog, uh, as well as follow her on LinkedIn and Twitter as well, um, and uh, you will not uh, regret that. Uh, so thank you once again, Dion, for being able to join us all the way from Florida today. Always a great pleasure. We always learn something new from you. Thank you so much, Roz. It, it was my pleasure for sure. Thank you again. I appreciate Fantastic. it. Fantastic. That was awesome. So that was Dion. Excellent. Always great to have Dion.